Oh, perfect timing, Yagami-san. And here I was about to go without you. Are you ready to visit Mamiya-san? Starving. Starting to feel it. Pretty tasty, thanks. Arigatou Remember, we're speaking to a victim here, Yagami-san. One whose assailant we defended in court. If we had tried to make an appointment, she probably would have declined outright. Hmm. Not sure showing up unannounced is much better. So let's just hope she's willing to talk. <sighs> yes. There's no way around it. It's a risk we had to take. Well, here goes nothing. Yes? I'm Shirasaki from the Genda Law Office, the attorney for Mr. Akihiro Ehara. You may remember me from the hearings. Why are you here? Don't you know it's rude to show up at someone's door uninvited? I understand, but we have a pressing matter that directly concerns you. If we could do this another way, we would. I apologize for any inconvenience. I'm sorry, but the trial's over and done with. You know I can legally turn you away. You're right, but I'm only asking a moment of your time. Please, would you mind? I don't have time for this. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Wait, 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 before you do that. Sorry to butt in. I'm Yagami, a detective helping Sari here out. And? Are you aware of the trending video that's leading people to believe Ahara committed murder? Thing is, the victim was confirmed to be alive in Yokohama until the morning of your own incident. And since Ahara was on the train with you, they're ruling him out as a murder suspect. So, what is it you're getting at? I'm just trying to ensure you're in the clear from any of that unfortunate business. If we could do this now, we'd never bother you again. All we need is 10 minutes of your time. How absurd. We're only trying to help, but if later would work better for you, we could always come back another time. With our supervisor, of course. That visit would probably be more formal. There'd be paperwork, audio tapes, you know the drill. You'll want to clear your schedule. I really don't have time for any of that. No, I understand, and it's entirely our fault. We thought we'd do this casually, but we really should have been more by the book. But it is a murder case, so we do have to make sure our paperwork is in order here. Now, would you prefer to schedule a date to accommodate a more formal interview? Uh, you said ten minutes if we do it now, right? We'll make it as painless as possible. All right. Hold on. We really do appreciate it. Well, I'm impressed. I'm also not sure I should trust a word you say ever again. Really? <laughs> I did get us in the door, didn't I? 
I'm joking. I do appreciate the help. Now let's not screw this up. This is likely the only conversation we'll have with Mamiya-san. Hello! <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Again, we apologize for the intrusion. Let's just get this over with already. Okay, bye-bye. We'll make this quick. Suspicious. 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 So, talk. I've already told the police and the court everything they could want to know about that morning. I'm sorry to put you through this again, but would you mind going over those details with us? What else is left to discuss? I understand how pressured you might feel. I've gone over this so many times. I wonder if pressing charges was even worth it. No. What you did was both brave and inspirational. Many victims are afraid to come forward for any number of reasons. Your voice might give them courage to find their own. Ironic. Hearing this from that predator's defense team. Well, perhaps. 
Would you mind walking us through that day from the beginning? It's nothing so mysterious. I was just on my way to work when some man grabbed my butt. That's all it was. Nothing else was out of the ordinary that day? Correct. Not to pry, but where is your husband today? Still at work? He usually doesn't get home until later. On that note, I have to feed my son, so let's get this wrapped up soon. We'll try our best to. Moving along. On that day, you and Ahara-san boarded the train bound for Ikebukuro, correct? Had you ever seen the man before then? No. At, at least not that I can recall. How many times must I go over this? Your lawyer friend here already knows everything I have to say. What do you gain by getting me to repeat things? That's the thing. Yagami-san here is a specialist. He can take whatever you repeat, analyze it, and draw up an entirely new conclusion. Right? Of course. That's exactly why I'm here. In the security footage, as you stepped onto the train, it looks like Ahara-san stepped right behind you. Were you aware of his presence at this point? I was. It felt like someone kept pushing up against me with no sense of personal boundaries. I remember second-guessing myself at the time, thinking it was normal for the train to be that packed. Then the train took off while you were stuck in that situation. Yes. And then I felt the back of his hand against me. It kept getting worse from there. To the point where he went under my skirt. And the pig had the nerve to write it off as an accidental brush on a crowded train. But that kind of touch wasn't accidental. He even grabbed at me. Truly awful. And I do sympathize. I've also had to turn in an abuser like that. Personally speaking, some men can't wait to debase themselves at the first opportunity. Why would you say that and look at me? I just stood there, frozen. I couldn't see who was touching me. I had no idea what to do. I wanted to scream. But what if he just played it off? So I decided I would bear it till the next station. Are you okay, Mommy? I'm fine, sweetie. We're just having a bit of grown-up talk. Are you hungry? Uh-huh. Then go read your book and wait over there for Mommy. We're almost done. You said the abuse lasted the entire six minutes between Ikebukuro and Shinjuku Station. Did you see the Groper's face at any time during that span? No. I was too terrified to look. And I thought, even if I did, he'd just pull away and escape. But just as the train was pulling into Shinjuku, I reached back and grabbed the hand on me. That's when I saw his face. Of course, he shook me off as the doors opened, but I'd already gotten a clear look at him. He must have known I could turn him in at that point. So he ran, and I chased after. Right. That was captured by the station security cameras. Great job tailing him in such a crowded space. On that note, did you ever happen to lose sight of Ahara-san while running? This cat was pretty easy to spot, and no one else was bolting off the platform like that, so I, I never lost sight of him. At that point, I could feel my voice returning, so I just screamed, that man grabbed me! I'm glad there were good Samaritans nearby. For sure. And there were a lot of smartphones out, so I figured there was no way for him to get away with it. I was so relieved. I see. I think I've got the gist of it. But now we've got a piece of evidence that contradicts what you've told us. What do you mean? Well, on the same day, at 6.30 a.m. in Yokohama, a student teacher named Hiro Mikoshiba was sent off to work by his mother. But he was soon abducted near his home, only to be found dead much later in Ichincho. Is that...? According to the video, the Hara-san here is the murderer. 
What? He killed Mikoshiba in cold blood to get vengeance for his bullied son. His kid was about to graduate high school, but instead he took his own life. So Ahara took it upon himself to punish his son's tormentor. That's awful. But now we come back to the issue here. If this footage is authentic, then Ahara-san couldn't have been your assailant. The victim's estimated time of death and Ahara-san's time of arrival in Tokyo simply don't allow for it. It's just not possible for someone to make that commute. <sighs> but there's the flip side. If Ahara-san was in fact your assailant, it would mean this murder footage is a fabrication. I don't know what you expect me to say after all this. Right? Now you know how we're feeling. That's why we came to see if you had any leads for us. So that's what this is about. After hearing your story, I have no doubt you endured a lot that day. Which would obviously mean that murder video was faked. Then... who shared that video? And why? Wish I knew. Based on the quality, something this convincing would need quite a budget. Whether it's CG on top of real murder footage, or just a rock-solid AI creation, no way it was cheap. So why go through all this effort to fake a murder? Who would benefit from it? But I have to say, I feel much closer to piecing this puzzle together with your help today. Thank you very much for your time. Yes, and rest assured, this will be the last time you see us. Our apologies for the unexpected visit, and for dredging up unpleasant memories. It's fine. So long as this is really the end of it all. I'd like to report Mamiya-san's account to the rest of the team. Can I count on you to be there? Sure. Let me give Kaito-san a heads up. All right, then I'll see you there. Yo, me. Hey, I just got back to Comrade Joe. Everything good? Any news? All good here, man. What's with you? You worried Arcade got to me or something? I mean, they did run their mouths about stabbing us in the back. But if you're good, I'm good. Anyway, I'm heading to Genda so Sari-san and I can go over what we learned from Mamiya. You're the boss. As for me, I'm calling it a day. <laughs> you do that. Are we ready, Yagami-san? Let's start with our visit to Mamiya-san, if that sounds reasonable to you. Yeah, let's start there. So, the victim's story is completely in line with her court testimony, huh? That's correct. There wasn't anything new to pick up. Unfortunately. In which case, should we look into the murder video instead? Like, figure out how they made it? Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Whether that tape's fake or real, someone had to put it online, right? Do we have any theories on who that might be? Well, the footage showed enough of the surroundings to make the crime scene clear. As somebody who's been there, I can confirm that the blood splotches match what you see in the footage. Which means... The murderer's accomplices have to be the ones who posted it for him. Yeah. I can't see it any other way. I also agree with Yagami-san. But in that case, what would their motive be? Maybe they wanted to make a mockery of the police, or even the whole system. Huh? We know Ihara got himself convicted for groping, so he'd have an alibi for Mikoshiba's killing. But then, his conspirators turned it around by uploading the murder video online. Almost as if to say, look how he got away with it. I see. 
Yeah, that does make it sound like he's taunting them. That's well and good, but I'd like to shift gears. Let's talk about the actual fabrication of the video. How does one go about that? Well, for example, the true culprit would be taped murdering Mikashiba. Then Ihara's face would be copied and blended onto the killers. That's how they'd approach it in a Hollywood movie. But then, wouldn't you be able to see traces of it being faked? Tsukumo-san reported that he's found nothing of the sort in his analysis. We've been down this road before. If we take the stance that the footage is fabricated, we have absolutely nothing to work with. Then let's tackle this from the stance that the video's actually real. If that's the case, there has to be a flaw in the groping issue. I think we've collected enough evidence to find it too. Before meeting with Yui Mamiya, didn't you mention the possibility of Ahara using a stand-in? Perhaps the real Ahara murdered Mikoshiba in Ijincho, then swapped places with the imposter so he could be detained. But we couldn't find an opportunity for the swap to happen, remember? From the moment he set foot on the Ikebukuro platform, Ihara was constantly on camera. But wait, that's not entirely accurate, is it? Huh? Remember how we mocked up a diagram of the Shinjuku station platform? Yeah. Oh, wait! That's it! You could be onto something. There's a point where Ahara wasn't on camera at all. What is this point you speak of? Let's all go over the diagram so that everything will be clear. Here's what I want you to see. Hey. Suspicious. It's very brief, but there's a moment where Ihara and Mamiya-san can't be seen by the security cameras. The dotted lines on the arrow represent the camera's blind spot. It does appear so. So you're saying this is where the groper, the fake Ihara, traded places with the real one? Can't say it's impossible, right? Right. Except if that actually happened, Mamiya-san would have been right behind them at the time. Could the two really swap places without her noticing? In a crowd like that, I think it's feasible. If that really was Ihara's plan, then I'd say he was being careless. Careless? How? Well, on the day of the incident, the station was packed for morning rush hour. That means there was no solid guarantee the assailant could make the switch. He could have been nailed by any random passerby before reaching the blind spot. Good point. Not only that, if Mamiya-san had called for help while the train was still moving, then the first Ahara would have been caught before even reaching the platform. Oh, I mean, yeah, called it. Think about it, Yagami-san. Why would Ahara's accomplices meticulously plan out every last detail of this alibi, only to leave such a crucial component to chance, as Hoshino-kun pointed out? Oh, just doing my job. True. Good work, Hoshino-kun. In fact, I think that may back up my own take on it. Yeah? What if everything, including the appearance of leaving the plan to chance, was part of the plan? Can you expound on that? I'm saying I agree that such an airtight alibi wouldn't have allowed for contingencies. And that takes the question to another level. Just how far did they line up the pieces in advance to make the swap work? Are you saying there's more to it than we discussed? What did we miss? I know this won't go over well, but what if Mamiya was colluding with Ahara all along? Huh? Bear with me. Let's say Mamiya was in on this and knew about the imposter in advance. If that's the case, the swap could happen right in front of her and no one but the three of them would know. You're saying the victim of a groping conspired with her assailant beforehand? That's ridiculous! Let me just say, I'm only trying to work out how a swap like that would be guaranteed to work. Now, if Ahara and his stand-in both know that Mamiya will pretend not to have seen them, they can trade places in the blind spot with impunity. Conversely, if Mamiya wasn't in on the plan, the idea of a swap would never work. 
but we can say with certainty that she would have seen the swap, so... She could have even called attention to the real Ahara the moment he stepped in. That way, the people around her would be focused on chasing the correct assailant. The rest is as we know it. They caught Ahara and detained him until the police showed up. Hold that thought. If your theory is accurate, what about Ahara's trace evidence? Remember that fibers of the victim's underwear were detected on his hand. Well, that can also be explained by Mamiya being in on the plan. For example, while the stand-in was showing himself at the security cameras, Mamiya could have easily provided Ahara access to a pair of underwear at the same time. Maybe the stand-in loitered around for so long because he was letting everyone else get themselves in place. It's not impossible. We can work out the other details later. But the point is, Ihara's murder alibi is shot if Mamiya was involved. In summary, it's possible Ihara disgraced himself to secure an unshakable alibi for Mikushiba's murder. I'll concede that it's an avenue worth pursuing. And when it comes to the prosecution, they can't just admit they got the first case so wrong. Plus, they can't question Ahara about Mikushiba's murder. In fact, their only option is to claim the tape was faked. So he managed to make a farce out of the system after all. Well, his court case for his son's bullying did get more or less thrown out, didn't it? The school, the investigative committee, and the court all agreed. There wasn't enough evidence to convict anyone. No surprise for me that the guy held a grudge against the system for so long. Hold on. Before we all decide on this... What's up? The obvious question to me is why would Mamiya be party to such a crime? She appears more than financially stable, and she's even raising a child. So why would she do something so enormously risky as helping establish a murder alibi? Yeah, I haven't gotten that far yet. But maybe she was promised something that far exceeds the risk. Or maybe Ahara has some kind of dirt on her even? Enough to make her help with a murder? What sort of secret would be big enough to force someone into that corner? What info do we have on Mamiya anyway? Maybe we can spot a connection to Ahara through her profile. I'll pull her information, just a second. Oh. I just thought of something else those two would have guaranteed by working together. What's that? If Ahara wanted to use this crime as a murder alibi, he needed it to blow up into the public eye. But if he had chosen a victim who stayed silent, then nothing would have come of it. A solid plan would need to eliminate that variable, which means Mamiya being an accomplice was crucial to Ahara's success. That's true. Looks like Ahara pulled one over on the prosecution then. Had his accomplices right where he wanted them, even his victim. Once we learn how he's connected to Mamiya, we can root out the rest of his team. Let's see. According to her file, her maiden name is Yui Suzuki. 30 years old, so that's consistent. Originally from Ota, Tokyo. Attended a private high school called Kurakawa Academy. Later graduated from Toto University. Huh. Met her husband on the job, apparently. Her husband, Taichi Mamiya, is an industrial designer at Techno Zeta Inc. Six years ago, she gave birth to their only son, Sotaku, who's now in first grade. Hold on. You said she went to Kurakawa Academy? I heard that name in Ijincho. If I recall correctly... When I went to scope out the murder scene, there were these three guys watching the detectives and me. They told us they were just checking things out, but they mentioned they're Kurakawa grads too. Do you have any ID on you? Uh, will my license work? Akake-san, age 30. Akaike-san, age 30. Mommy is 30 as well. What's that got to do with anything? Aren't we trying to find a connection between Mamiya and Ahara? I found the Kurakawa Academy website. Looks like they're pretty prestigious. It's in Tokyo, specifically in Ota. Pretty close to where Mamiya lived. 
No. What? The girls there get such cute uniforms. You little... You want to start all over from the bar exam? Wait. I've seen that uniform before too, Ashley. Where? On an old picture of a teacher at Serio High. Sawasensei. Ahara's son confided in her. Is she actually a Kurokawa grad too? I don't know Sawasensei's exact age, but she could well be 30. Maybe all of them are even classmates. Could this mean they're actually linked? The victim and her up-to-now unrelated assailant? It's a tenuous link at best. Could fall apart any time. But no true detective alive would pass it up. A previously unseen link is established between the groper and the victim. Charting out their relationship is akin to tracing a spider's web. But with each false thread ruled out, only the improbable truth remains. Ehara orchestrated the groping as a diversion, and by tarnishing his name, he secures both an alibi and his ultimate revenge. Hiro Mikashiba's murder was sparked by the bullying of Toshiro Ehara, who committed suicide four years ago. The graphic video that hit the net showed the world how Toshiro's father, Akihiro Ehara, had brutally avenged his son. We also know the father had accomplices. On October 7th at 6.30 a.m., they forced Mikoshiba into a vehicle, took him to an abandoned building, and gravely injured him. Then, around 7.30 a.m., the time frame when Ahara killed Mikoshiba, the other conspirators were probably nearby, even though they weren't on camera. At the same time, 30 kilometers away at Ikebukuro Station, a man who looks like Ahara is caught on camera. We'll call that guy the stand-in. The stand-in made sure he was in front of the cameras for more than an hour before boarding the 9.06 a.m. train the same one Yui Mamiya was on. After committing sexual battery on that train, he meets the real Ahara in the camera's blind spot, and they change places. That's how he established a false alibi for Mikoshiba's murder. And to achieve this, the victim, Yui Mamiya, had to have been in on it from the start. Hmm. Sure are a lot of people getting their hands dirty for Ahara. Mamiya? Ahara's standing on the train, the guys who kidnapped Mikoshiba. How did some troubled cop manage to recruit so many allies? Well, one person that comes to mind who might be the key to all this is Yoko Sawa. She's a teacher at Serio High. She was the only adult Toshiro kun ever told about the bullying, and she supervised Mikoshiba as a teacher before he disappeared. On top of that, She's a Kurokawa Academy graduate, same as Mamiya. Those trespassers at the murder scene were also from Kurokawa. Since they're all about the same age, it's possible they were all classmates. So you're saying these classmates are also Uhara's murder accomplices? If we consider Yokosawa the central link, that's very possible. We do know that as a teacher, she felt deep remorse for Toshiro-kun's suicide. Maybe she recruited her old classmates to help Ehara take his revenge. Yeah, best not to rule that out. Though I'm hoping that's not the case. Why is that? It's just... She's a really good teacher. She's passionate, responsible. And she's always putting the students first. I know she regrets the past. At 
a student died on her watch. And now another of her students, Miku Shiva, is found murdered. So if it turns out she's involved in that, I doubt I'll be able to trust my own judge of character ever again. Yagami. I'm going back to Ejinsho tomorrow. The plan is to bring up Mamiya's name to Sawa-sensei and see how she reacts. Until then, let's not jump to conclusions about her involvement. All right. Uh, can I chime in real quick? I was looking into Kurokawa Academy and I stumbled across something that may be relevant. What's that? Well, it happened 13 years ago, but there was an attempted suicide. A third year jumped off the school's roof after being thoroughly humiliated. Actually, Sawa-sensei mentioned that. She said it was a boy in her class. Right, that's gotta be the same case then. The student's name was Mitsuru Kuzumoto. He's 30 now, but still in a coma. Huh, and all that info's on the net? It wouldn't be normally, but his mother happens to be Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health. Ever heard the name Reiko Kusumoto? Not once. I have. It was on the news. They were talking about her and her son. Well, do you remember the uproar in the health ministry when Vice Minister Ichinose got arrested? Apparently, his successor couldn't contain the resulting chaos, which is when Kusumoto-san got tapped to lead. They couldn't afford another criminal scandal, so her promotion was out of the blue. She was a safe choice, a veteran with tenure and experience. Not to mention, her son's tragedy made people see her as a more sympathetic figure. Very popular. She's kind of a new generation heroine, so to speak. Huh. Is any of that relevant to the case at hand, though? Who knows? But Reiko Kusumoto and Ahara both have children who were bullying victims. I don't think that's a connection we can afford to overlook, if you ask me. Okay, so Kusumoto's son. What exactly happened to him? Let's see. He was bullied by a fellow third year at his school, Shinya Kawai. The records say he harassed Mitsuru-kun every day, in and out of school. Well, one time he even stuffed dirty rags in his mouth. That's so cruel. Yeah, and the teacher was a real piece of work. Apparently he knew, but he just smirked and said, don't overdo it. Oh, I remember now. The media pounced on that one hard. If they were classmates, then both Sawa-sensei and Mamiya would know about this. And maybe because they couldn't save Mitsuru-kun, their guilt left them open to Ahara's persuasion. But to prove that, we'll have to hear from them directly. I'll talk to Sawa-sensei first thing tomorrow. That'd be helpful. In the meantime, I'll be working on Ahara's appeal. It's clear they missed something important in the trial, since Ahara is apparently innocent of sexual battery. Being that he was out committing murder at the time. What started as a simple harassment case sure has blown up big.